I remember very well the year 2014 when we were hosting the gold steering wheel here at uh, Axel Springer and you got the uh, award for lifetime achievement and I was sitting in the first row with the then very successful and famous uh, CEO of a very big German car company and I asked him while you were on stage isn't this guy dangerous for you I mean this looks really serious he said oh no don't worry first of all the whole idea of uh, electric driving is never going to be a mass market <laughs> sure. Second, these guys, that a lot. <laughs> these guys in Silicon Valley, they have no clue about engineering, about building really beautiful and great cars, so we don't have to worry. Uh, by then, Tesla's market cap was 23 billion. Uh, today it's 536 <laughs> billion US dollars. <laughs> the market cap of VW then was uh, 86, and to today it's 77. And so you could, uh, you, you are with Tesla two and a half times bigger than BMW, VW, and Daimler. I even have said you the stock ever, is too high. I mean, what am I supposed to do? You know, like, have I you ever considered to the buy? The stock is too high a long time, like when it was like at $800 pre, pre split. And they didn't listen, they didn't listen to me, but you know, I tell you. <laughs> and the SEC complained again. I mean, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a serious option to buy one of the incumbents, one of the big car companies for you? Well, I, I think it, we're definitely not going to launch a hostile takeover. So I, I suppose if there was someone... But a friendly one. If somebody said, hey, we think it would be a good idea to merge with Tesla, we'd certainly have that conversation. Mm. Um, but, you know, we don't want to you know, be a hostile, hostile takeover sort of situation. A hundred years ago, uh, nobody could imagine uh, elevator without a lift boy. Today, nobody yeah. could imagine a lift with a lift boy. Yeah. So when is autonomous driving really, really going to happen? And when, when are you able uh, to do it? And when is it going to be approved? Okay, just between us. Yeah, um, it's a very discreet <laughs> circle here. Yeah. Um, so, well, first of all, I, I'm, not, I'm not against people driving, to be clear. Uh, so I think people will drive cars basically as far into the future as I can imagine. Um, it's just that it's going to be increasingly unusual to, to drive your own car. Um, and while it's fun to drive, uh, a, you know, a, a well-handling car on a winding road in beautiful terrain, of course, that's, that's fun. Um, but it's not fun to drive a car in uh, terrible gridlock traffic. Like, you know, going through extreme traffic, that's no fun driving a car. So I think people are unlikely to most of the time want to commute or with with their uh, and drive themselves um, and you know t people are typically spending an hour and a half a day maybe two hours uh, on average driving um, especially say in, like California or something like that it's very common um, and some people will, will actually commute like three hours a day sometimes it's pretty crazy so like t 10 years from now I think 10 years from now Almost all cars will be will have full autonomy capability. Uh, that new, all new cars produced. So there's there's about two billion cars and trucks in the in the existing fleet, um, and the new vehicle production is about five percent of the fleet size. So about 100 million. Uh, so even the point at which all cars are autonomous, it'll still take you know 20 years to replace all the cars, assuming that the number of cars and trucks trucks in the fleet stays constant. Um, but like say 10 years from now, I would say vast majority of cars electric, like maybe 70, 80 percent or more, uh, and uh, almost all cars autonomous. Electric autonomy is absolutely the future, no question. It's just a question of when. Um, uh, but then, like I said, sometimes people think that that means the, the global fleet gets replaced instantly. It's like, nope, you have to go 20 years beyond that point before, uh, it, 20 years from the point at which all cars are new cars are electric, then the fleet will be replaced. Um, this is just an important. Uh, it's not like you, sometimes people are used to like mobile phones and that kind of thing. It's like two-year or three-year replacement rate, but cars are a much uh, more expensive asset, a long, longer life. Uh, anyway, to, to actually answer your question, um, I'm I'm extremely confident uh, of achieving full autonomy uh, and, and releasing it to the Tesla customer base uh, next year. Now, the, uh, that there's an uncertain period of time for when regulatory approval will, be, will take, you know, how long will it take? But I think if you are able to accumulate uh, billions of kilometers of autonomous driving, then it's difficult to argue. And, and look at the 
accident rate uh, when the car is autonomous versus non-autonomous. And in fact, our, our statistics already show a massive difference when the car is on autopilot or not on autopilot. If the safety is much greater even with the current autopilot software. And we are discussing level five autonomy, so really yes. full autonomy. Will yes. Europe lag behind or will it be approved here at the same time like in America or China? It's hard to say uh, exactly when it will be approved. Um, I, I mean, just to, to, and our customers already know this, but the, the, the EU regulators are the most conservative. Mm. Um, and. Uh, I, yeah, but I think at least some jurisdictions will allow full self-driving uh, next year. Okay. Where do you sleep tonight? In the, in the, tonight's in the factory. In, a, in the factory? Not uh, in well, hotel. technically in a conference room in the factory, but yeah. You sleep in a conference room in the not finished factory tonight? Yeah, it gives me a good feel for what's going on. Alone or? Uh, yeah, I <laughs> assume so. <laughs> <laughs> Is this an invitation? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Um. Elon, you have so many uh, projects. It's not only Tesla or SpaceX, it's Neuralink, uh, it's the boring company, uh, uh, so many things. And when we discussed last time, I asked you what is the most important project or the most important topic for you to deal with in the foreseeable future? And you said that is truly the role that AI is going to play in our society. Could you explain yeah. why and why that is a big opportunity but also seems to worry you? Uh, yeah, I think, well, I mean, humans have been the smartest creature on Earth for a long time and that is going to change with uh, what's typically called artificial general intelligence. Uh, so this is, say, an AI that is uh, smarter than a human in every way, could, could even simulate a human. Uh, so. You know, the, the, this is something we should be concerned about. I think there should be uh, government oversight of uh, AI developments, um, especially super advanced AI. It's just, this is anything that is a potential uh, danger to the public, we generally agree that this should have uh, government oversight to ensure that the, the public safety is taken care of. Because um, you feel that one day uh, the, uh, uh, mankind could serve the machines and not the other way around? Honestly, when I see people on their phones, I think we're already serving the machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like everyone's uh, answering the questions. You know, every time you do a search or add information, you're sort of building this, the, the, the digital group mind. Um, but yeah, uh, it, the advent of artificial general intelligence is called the singularity for a reason, because just like a black hole, which is a singular singularity, it's difficult to predict what will happen. Um, so it's not as though the advent of AGI is necessarily bad, but it's bad as one of the possible outcomes. And when is singularity in the, in the definition of uh, Ray Kurzweil going to happen? Um, well, I think you were saying he, he, he's predicting 2025. I think that's uh, reasonably accurate. Mm -hmm. And how can it be avoided that is then uh, more a threat for humanity than an opportunity? Is it a question of governance so that there is not too much power yeah. in one or in few hands? Or how would, you, yeah. how would you make sure that it goes into the right direction? I think we should have uh, a, a government oversight just like we do. We have uh, government oversight and regulation of uh, cars and aircraft and uh, food and pharmaceuticals. These are all uh, you know, there's a, there are regulators that oversee uh, these developments to ensure public safety. Um, and I think uh, auto, uh, digital superintelligence would also be potentially a public safety risk. And so it should be, it's, I think it's very important to, for uh, regulators to keep an eye on that. Who and should own the data, data by then? I think everyone should own their own data. Like individuals should own their data. Um, and it certainly shouldn't be tricked by some terms and conditions of a website and suddenly you don't own your data, that's crazy. Uh, who reads those terms and conditions anyway? So, uh, but I think it's just, you know, like we wouldn't let people develop uh, a nuclear bomb in the backyard just for the hell of it, you know. That, that seems crazy. So, digital superintelligence, I think, has the potential to be more dangerous than a nuclear bomb. So, 
Yeah, we should uh, just, somebody should be keeping an eye. It's, we can't have the inmates running the asylum here. Which is a global uh, issue, because if we do well, but uh, China has other rules and uh, a different regulatory framework, uh, that is another uh, yeah, I don't, I don't challenge. Think yeah, I, I generally like that. This is one of the rebuttals I get from those developing AI. And Tesla is also developing a form of AI with self driving, but it's a very narrow form of AI. It's just mm -hmm. like, um, it, like the car is not going to wake up Sunday one day and take over the world. Um, so, so it's, it's uh, but, but the, the rebuttal I get is like, well, you know, China is going to have unfettered uh, AI development, and so if, if we have regulations and it slows us down, then China will have it. And I'm like, look, I, from my conversations with uh, government officials in China, they are they they they're quite concerned about AI as well, and they, uh, in fact, they're probably more likely to have a good oversight than I think other countries. 